For more than 15 years, work has been going on to decommission the Lubmin nuclear power plant near Greifswald in eastern Germany. Like this old East German reactor, all remaining nuclear plants in Germany are to be taken offline, in a process scheduled to last until 2022. But Lumin is also the site of new construction. Directly opposite the defunct power station is a company that produces parts for wind farms. Masts, to be exact, for wind farms in the North and Baltic Seas. Many of the staff helped in the decommissioning of the old nuclear plant. Now they're working for the electricity production of the future. And that energy will be generated sustainably from solar and wind energy and biomass. Clean, environmentally friendly and safe. A lesson hammered home by the nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan. Around 20% of electricity is already being derived from renewable sources. And the aim is to increase that share to 80% by 2050. For an industrial nation such as Germany, competing on the global market and making the energy switchover represents a huge challenge, as well as a great opportunity for progress. We're approaching Alpha Ventus, 60 kilometers off the mainland. Germany's first offshore wind park in the middle of the North Sea. Wind farms such as this one will be vastly expanded in future. The helicopter brings groups of scientists out to sea several times a week. They're investigating the environmental impact of the wind turbines on their surroundings. One of the scientists is Felix Jachmann. He's researching the interaction of birds and marine mammals with the park. Yesterday, for example, two porpoises were chasing what was probably a shoal of fish around the platform. There were also seagulls and gannets, so there are marine mammals around at times. A second helicopter takes technicians off one of the masts. They've been fixing a malfunction in the turbine. Hanging from a cable at a height of some 130 meters isn't for the faint-hearted. After several years of construction, Alpha Ventus is now online. Its 12 wind turbines supply power to around 50,000 homes. Checking electricity lines from the air. Future investment in power grids like this one will have to run into the billions. After all, the plan is to utilize wind energy generated in the north in other parts of Germany. Detlef Strauss works for a regional energy supplier in eastern Germany. He's expanding his company's grid and keeps a close eye on progress at a number of construction sites. At this substation, electricity from the region is converted before being transmitted onwards. Substations such as this are urgently required. Every year, the regional power supply also incorporates a certain amount of green energy, which is relayed via overhead power lines. These overhead power lines collect all the solar and wind energy along the way and are connected to many different substations which send the electricity here. The existing plant was no longer able to transfer the power to the high voltage grid. That's why it was imperative to modernize these facilities. And work to expand the grid continues in Germany and internationally to ensure that green energy reaches the customer without a hitch. We pay a visit to the Meyer family in Mannheim. If the energy switch is to happen, consumers also have a key role to play. This family is participating in a pilot scheme. The family's energy consumption is regulated by this computer, what's known as an energy butler. It only turns on devices when electricity is cheaper. At night, for example. We fill up the dishwasher during the day, then at some point in the evening it runs. It used to run in the afternoon sometimes, now it mostly goes on at night. It's a concept that's both sensible and practical. The economical use of electricity lowers costs and allows renewable energy to be better integrated into the power grid. The system was developed by a software company in Mannheim. 
Technology like this could make a real difference to how energy is utilized more efficiently in future. The Nordhausen University of Applied Sciences in the state of Thuringia is the first technical college in Germany to specialize in renewable energies. The course also attracts interest among international students. In this exercise, the professor and his students are able to measure the impact of the sun's rays on the university's own heat collector. I see various warm and cold spots, and the collector is warmer in some places than in others. Renewable energies technology is a runaway sales success. Every year, German companies export products worth several billion euros. Graduates from this university stand a good chance of finding a job. Some 370,000 people are currently employed in the renewable energy sector here in Germany. The switch to renewables will generate more jobs. The newly trained specialists will also be able to help in the research and development of renewable energies. One of the most urgent problems is finding more effective ways to store electricity. A new kind of storage facility is being planned here in the Harz region, in the old underground mine shafts. Engineers at Klaus Theil University of Technology believe they've found a new use for the pits. Their idea is to store energy in the shafts, releasing it when required. And this is how it works. Two galleries are dug into the mine at different depths. The lower one is filled with water. Whenever the wind blows, pumps use the energy to move water to the upper gallery. There it's kept as a silent energy reserve. When the wind is no longer blowing and reserves are running low, the water flows back down powering electricity generators. A facility like this one could supply a large city with power for four hours. The advantage of underground electricity production is that it leaves the natural surroundings above ground unchanged, and that means it will be greeted with far greater acceptance by the population. When looking for a suitable site, the researchers had to examine old maps. The mine needed to have a vertical shaft going down as far as possible, as the energy yield increases with the difference in depth between the two galleries. The pilot project is to be set up here. It's an innovative solution to the energy storage problem. If all goes well, the plant could be hooked up to the grid by 2019. Amman, the capital of Jordan. Water shortage presents the city with its greatest challenge. Jordan is one of the world's most arid nations. Transporting the little water that's available from the low-lying Jordan Valley up into the higher cities is a laborious and costly process. Up to now, this has been done using outdated, inefficient pumps that consume huge amounts of power. We've got to overcome a difference in altitude of 1,400 meters for millions of people. Not for small villages, but for major cities. The water has to be pumped from down here right up there. It's a huge technical challenge with an enormous outlay of energy. Germany is now helping to improve the efficiency of the plants. This pilot project is working with new pressure shroud pumps from Germany, which consume around a third less energy than the old models. This cuts costs and is kinder on the environment. A celebration to mark the inauguration of the new pumping station. The project is just one example of international partnership, working together to bring about global change. <laughs>